Hi, I'm Brett Langelbach. I'm a physical therapist, and today I'm going to be talking to you how to perform the Buffalo Concussion Treadmill Test for your concussion patients. The Buffalo Concussion Treadmill Test is a great way to assess the heart rate at which a concussion patient's symptoms become aggravated, so you can design a plan of care at a submax threshold in order to allow them to increase that heart rate over time. To begin, you want to carefully go over the testing procedure with your patient, making sure to pay special attention to explain the RPE scale to them, as well as the visual analog scale, and to let them know what the ending criteria of the test is. You should not perform this test if they re had their concussion within the last 24 hours, or if their symptoms are a seven out of 10 or higher. After explaining the test, you'll want, them, you'll want to give them an accurate heart rate monitor. I like the Polar series. This one keeps heart rate in real time it's easy to use and you don't have to wait for it to load to get the heart rate. And after they properly put it on, you'll want to let them sit and rest calmly in a quiet area for two minutes to allow you to get baseline heart rate readings. After two minutes are up, you can head over to the treadmill. Set up the treadmill for your patient. The speed is determined by the patient's height. For patients up to 5'10", the speed will be 3.2 miles an hour. For patients 5'10 and over, it'll be 3.5 miles an hour. Every minute, It'll start at 0% incline, then every minute it'll increase by 1% while the speed remains constant. If the patient is able to get all the way up to 15% incline, then instead of increasing the incline every minute, you will increase the speed to, by 0.4 miles an hour every minute. To begin data collection, have the patient stand on the rails like this, start the treadmill, bring it up to speed. I am six foot two, so I'll go to three and a half miles an hour. Take your first data collection while your patient's like this. You, the data collection involves taking their heart rate, their RPE, and their VAS, and as well as any symptoms that are present or will develop as the test goes. At the top of the minute, you can start the patient, have them start walking, make sure they do it carefully, and then after a minute of walking, you will increase the incline, take the heart rate again, the RPE, visual analog scale, as well as any new or recurring symptoms. Once they have hit the ending criteria, then you will take the speed down to 2.0 miles an hour and 0% incline and allow them to walk at this speed for two minutes. And then after the two minutes are up, stop the test, take the three variables, heart rate, RPE, and VAS again, as well as any symptoms. And that's it for the test. Okay. Once they're done with the test, take them over back to their quiet room and allow them to just relax and recover while allowing their symptoms to come back to pre-test values. From personal experience, this test can be very aggravating for the patients and even after you they hit the ending criteria, their symptoms will continue to increase occasionally. So they might not be very, they might be dizzy, they might have a major headache, they might have neck pain, a whole bunch of things. So be sure you have already let them know things might happen and be walk with them back to the room and make sure they're nice and safe. Now that we've gone over how to perform the test, let's discuss the ending criteria. There are five major points that the test could be ended on. The first is if the visual analog scale changes by more than two, three points. For example, if they start the test with a VAS score of a two and it increases to a five over the course of the test, then the test is over and they may begin the cool down and then end in their room. Additionally, if they have a new symptom development, for example, they start the test with no headache, but then during the course of the test, they develop a headache, that counts as a point. So instead of going from a two to a five to end the test, all they need to do is go from a two to a four with a headache, that counts as a three point change, and then they can enter the cool down and then end the test. The second criteria, if the patient becomes exhausted with an RPE score of 17 or greater. If they haven't hit their 80% of their age predicted heart rate max, you can try to convince them to continue with the test, but it is totally fine if they want to stop the test at this point as well. The third criteria is if there is a, the patient has a rapid change in symptoms, or if the examiner notices that the patient appears faint, they have stopped communicating very well, or if continuing would pose a serious medical threat to the patient. The fourth criteria is if the patient reaches greater than 90% of their age predicted heart rate max, but they're still reporting no symptoms and a very low RPE. At this point, it's important to make sure they fully understand the RPE scale 
to see if they need to make any changes to their self-reported score before beginning and entering the cooldown. The final criteria is simply if the patient wants to stop the test. This can occur at any point during the test, and the only thing you need to do is make sure you record the reason for stopping the test if it differs from any of the four previously discussed criteria. That's it for the Buffalo Concussion Treadmill Test. Hope this helps everyone better evaluate and treat patients with concussions. Thank you.